Hey, just want to uh, share very quickly uh, about uh, what we see in Daniel chapter 6, right? Um, Daniel chapter 6, um, about the life of Daniel, something that we learn and something that just to inspire us to uh, in the way we, we can live for God. It's amazing. Um, Daniel chapter 6, uh, we read about how Daniel distinguished himself way above all the people, the satraps and everyone, uh, the, the people who were their governors and so on. And the king actually thought, maybe I should give Daniel in charge of the entire kingdom. Right? That's what we see. And, um, and the people whom, um, who were there, the governors, the satraps and all the other people, verse 5, we see that they conspired against Daniel. And then they said this. They said, we cannot find anything, any charge against this Daniel. Okay, or any mistake or anything against this Jan Daniel, except it if we can find it against the law of God, of his God, right? Uh, except in his belief, in his faith. Um, apart from that, in his work, in his work ethics, his integrity, we can't find anything wrong. We cannot, we can't find fault with him. Okay, so that's what they they said, and uh, and so they conspired and they said. You know, let's make it a rule that only the king um, shall be petitioned, or uh, you know, you can pray only to the king. And the king, king of course, uh, signs it. Uh, he doesn't think too much about it. And with King Darius, he signs it. Now, we read in Daniel ten. I'm sorry, Daniel 6 and verse 10, that Daniel, when he knew that this writing was signed, he went and he prayed. Uh, how many ever times? Three times, right? He prayed, as was his custom since the early days. So he did not change his posture. He did not change his spiritual life or spiritual discipline because of this. Uh, another way to look at it is like it says, Scripture says, he did it as was his custom in the early days, since the early days, meaning that this was his custom. He had it instilled he was consistent in other words right this is what we see so that's something that we learn about daniel apart from the fact that he was a person of integrity and excellence we see that he was a man of discipline and con being consistent okay um verse 16 the king realizes uh what he has done and then he comes to daniel Daniel is about to be cast or thrown into the den of lions. He comes to Daniel and he says, Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, okay, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Okay. In other words, he's saying that, Daniel, you've been consistent. You've been consistent in the way you serve your God. You know, it's something that a pagan king, you, know, you realize that he's saying, he's not saying my God or our God. He's not yet uh, come to that um, relationship, or he's still, you know, at a distance. He's observing, and he's saying, "Your God, whom you serve continually, He will deliver you." So he's noticed something about Daniel. He's noticed his faith. He's noticed his excellence in work, etc. And he's saying, "Your God, whom you serve continually." In other words, he's saying, "You've been so consistent in your serving of your God." He will save you. Okay, so something that stands out for us in the life of Daniel is, apart from all the other attributes, is a life of consistency, a life that is so consistent when it comes to his walk with God, when it comes to his spiritual discipline, when it comes to uh, his work, and right? something for us to see, uh, something for us to learn, and emulate. Is it possible? Yes, it is. It we see it in. Daniel's life, and so also we read about in jo Joseph's life, right? So, so let's pray and say, Lord, you know, I want to be consistent. I want to I want to be consistent. Help me, enable me to be consistent in my life, in in everything, in everything, all aspects of my life. Help me to be consistent, right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you even as we studied from the life of Daniel, Lord. Enable us to be consistent. We thank you for all the resources that you've given us. We thank you that your very presence. Lord, uh, indwells us, Lord. You indwell us by your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, 
we thank you that you will enable us to walk in this manner help us to be consistent help us to lord to put to death the things of the flesh god if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live and so god we pray that even as you even as we pray right now lord let things be put to death let things be brought to an end that are counterproductive to living uh, to live a life of consistency counterproductive to to life itself god i pray that those things will be brought to an end i pray that all lethargy and complacency lord will be removed out of our lives lord and uh, enable us cause us to thrive and flourish lord to this life that you've called us god we thank you in jesus master's name we pray amen amen okay <clears throat> so let's pick up from where we um, where we stopped last class about uh, 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 we we were studying about communication, and we saw that um, a, a communication, verbal, nonverbal, uh, and all kinds of um, you know everything in between, like gestures and everything. So just just do a list of you know some of these nonverbal communications, you know, and um, and we see that as uh, as important as words are, uh, so also the gestures or uh, everything else that accompanies these words because they will indicate whether a person who's communicating whether there is any uh, conflict between the message and and um, and, and what they are coming what they're saying do they really mean what they say is there any conflict uh, because of which the gesture doesn't suit the, um, the 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 message the content or the tone and the pitch of it of how it is said does not does again conflict with the content of the message. Um, so here are some things to help us, right? Body movements, uh, hand gestures, nodding of head, etc. Or if it is not there, and the person is still saying that um, you know I agree, and it's not accompanied by gestures that you know that kind of reiterate that, then you know you know to what level that agreement is, right? Posture. With the posture of the person, whether they are, you know, is, is an open posture, inviting posture, or a closed posture, uh, restrictive posture, defensive posture. We uh, understand that eye contact. If a person continues to, you know, um, is not comfortable looking in the eye, then you know that they're not comfortable. Uh, they're not. They're agreeing to certain things, right? Or they, maybe they're not speaking the truth. Um, they're not being truthful. They are. They have something. Uh, that they uh, something that's um, that they are not revealing, right? So eye contact, paralanguage, meaning pitch tone, uh, the speed at which we speak, rate of speech, right? All that is what we call as paralanguage, right? Uh, personal space. This is a you know this this is so much um, influenced by culture as well, right? Personal space. You know whether the person. Communicating whether they're too close, too far away, etc., and culture has a role to play uh, to influence this as well. So that also uh, helps to communicate the message. Facial expressions, smiling, frowning, blinking, um, you know, all these things, uh, which convey right fear, anger, uh, happiness, sadness, everything. Right? There are some facial expressions which are. Um, which are common across cultures, right? Um, now, certain gestures, certain facial expressions are common, but there could be some which are maybe, um, uh, you know, part of one culture, but they are not, right? For example, even eye contact, you know, some cultures might feel that if you look a person in the eye, then it's a sign of disrespect. You know, you're, it's a sign of disrespect. You're actually disrespecting their authority. You're looking, you know, you're standing, you're with, withstanding their authority. So it could be that. So a mark of respect could be not looking a person in the eye. Well, we need to understand the culture, right? Okay, facial expressions, physiological changes. Physiological changes could be a person fidgeting, right? A person. Maybe just you know doing that on the table, you know, which indicates impatience. Right? Let's get on with it. Let's get this done. So all this communicates something. 
So, so nonverbal communication is an, an integral part of communication, and we need to understand it, learn it, and make it part of our uh, our communication as well. So, you know, certain inviting postures. Uh, I'm talking about nonverbal, you know, cues. Now, this could really help the listener, the one to whom we are communicating. The same way, you know, if somebody is telling us something, speaking to us, and um, our nonverbal gestures could actually help the person put at ease the person and help the person actually share. If we are more inviting, if we are intimidating in our or closed in our uh, in our postures, then maybe they would hold back or withhold from communicating their heart. So, as, as we are in you know in ministry uh, and uh, wanting to serve the Lord, this is something very important for us. Uh, not only for the counselors, not only for those who are you know, uh, in in pastoral kind of roles, but but for everyone. Right. Um, it it it's actually a very important um, uh, important thing for us to learn. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the next topic, which is about listening. Now we saw that when it comes to when it comes to communication, speaking is one part of it. Right. It's just one part of it. Communication is always a two-way street. Right? It is not just downloading of information, um, just going on and on without the other person receiving right so the person receiving and um, ensuring that um, they communicate that they are receiving you know it's also a very important part of um, communication right it's the is a it's a, i would say is the second part of communication right uh, second half of it so both halves make the whole right so what about listening okay. so listening is very important uh, aspect and much ignored aspect of communication right so it, it is in it, it is in when we listen that we actually receive the information accurately it is when we listen that we actually discern uh, and correctly interpret whatever is being shared so listening is not just hearing Okay, so that's the thing. Listening is not just hearing. Why? Because hearing is just the physical ability to to receive that sound, to make sure that yes, the sound is being received. Okay, that is hearing. But when it's listening, it is much more than that. It is making sure that we are receiving it. It is making sure that we are deciphering it, understanding it. That all that goes into listening. Okay, so listening requires more effort. Listening requires focus. Listening is intentional because you're making an effort in order to make sure that you receive it correctly, right? So listening is that. So it's just not hearing. Okay, so for example, a person could be just reading, reading something, reading the newspaper, and maybe engaging in a conversation with the other person and saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead." Tell me, I'm I'm listening. Yeah, just go ahead and you know tell me what you wanted to say. But are they listening? No, right? they're not listening. They're hearing, but they're not actually listening. Or we might be checking our phones and checking our messages and say, yeah, just go ahead. You know, I'm I'm still uh, I'm, I'm still listening to you. Uh, go ahead. But if you look at it, are they actually listening? No, they are not. Right? They are they are hearing. What is being said, but they are not actually listening. Why? Because there's low, lack of focus, there's lack of uh, con uh, concentration, uh, there's no intentionality and all that. Right. So listening is very important. Okay. So let's look at a few um, a few things about listening. Okay. A few, a few um, statistics based on research. It's an old one. Um, you know, we when it comes to communication itself, that we spend seventy percent of the time communicating something. Okay. And only 30% not communicating. So we're talking about verbal, non-verbal, everything put together. We actually communicate 70% of the time. There's some signal that is that we send out uh, to the other person, right? Okay. Then the second thing to see is that this aspect of it, when it comes to communication, the 70%, we see that we listen 
or we need to listen 45%. Actually, listening happens, right? Reading, writing, speaking make up the 55%, but listening is a big component, right? 55% um, of it, 45% of it is, um, it, it's, it is to be uh, considered, listening is to be considered, OK? okay. So let's look at uh, some of the purpose. I mean, when you look at the big picture, what is the purpose of listening? To focus, to make sure that what is being said, spoken, what is being communicated is received correctly. Okay? Because we can perceive it very differently from the way it is being communicated. For example, if we do not look, consider the whole person when they are communicating, if we don't look at the gestures, if we don't look at the tone, or consider the tone of their voice and so on, we miss out on a large portion of the message itself. Right? So we understand it very differently from the way it is communicated. So um, so we need to focus. We need to be good listeners. Okay, Listeners, uh, accuracy of the message, to assess what is being said, to analyze what is being communicated, all that requires listening. Okay, um, That is why in school, our teachers told us repeatedly, listen, you know, um, over and over again. OK. So uh, what enhances our understanding is, again, when we listen intentionally, when we take those cues of uh, nonverbal communication. Right? Listening also helps in communicating back to the person. It encourages the person. When we are listening intently, when we are uh, agreeing, uh, when, we, when we also communicate back with our gestures, we are also so showing this, telling the person that, hey, I, I'm interested in what you go on. Right? Uh, tell us some more. Go on. Right? So maybe you're in a counseling kind of a situation. right? And um, you're counseling someone. The person is actually telling their problems. Just imagine if they stop with 10% of the problem. Okay, And why did they stop? Because we were not listening. Maybe because we were preoccupied. Maybe we were distracted. Maybe we, we just zoned out. Right? And people can see it in our eyes right? when they're talking, when they're saying something, and, and we are so far away. Right? Um, and maybe we are nodding at the most inappropriate times or saying you know, yes at the most inappropriate times, so we, which means that we have clearly lost track of what is being said. So the person also loses interest okay? and tends to shut down. Right? And that can be detrimental. If you are a counselor, or, or if you are a, if you if you need to make a decision based on whatever has is been communicated, right? If you may need to make a judgment, if you need to discern what is right and wrong, and if we are not good listeners, then we our judgment, meaning our decision, our choice that we are making based on what we are receiving, is going to be a little biased, or it's going to fall short of how it should be because we've not heard the whole thing maybe we just jumped in or maybe we did not we missed out on the facts so maybe there were three facts out of which we caught only one and the two important things um, we missed out right okay so it also helps the speaker to communicate fully freely openly honestly um, it also helps develop a selflessness report uh, uh, approach because we are putting the uh, speaker first, right? So, so all that happens. Okay, to arrive to a shared, uh, to arrive at a shared and agreed understanding and acceptance of both sides and views. Okay, that happens. Okay. So, so here are some principles of um, effective listening. Okay. So, how can I? Here are some things that we can put to practice. Okay. So, first thing is, when somebody's talking, when somebody's sharing, um, don't interrupt. Stop talking okay stop talking don't talk listen don't interrupt don't finish their sentence you know maybe they're taking time and they're saying you know once upon a time and or they're saying once upon a, and then you want to finish with once upon a time right yeah go on we're in a hurry right so don't finish their sentence don't um, 
don't interrupt don't talk over them we're saying something and then we are you know saying something in addition to over what they're saying don't do that right so try it out you know just listen um, to what the other person is saying without interrupting right listen intently uh, listen to um, okay we're going to look at a few other things okay so prepare yourself to listen which means you relax put things out of your mind don't you know maybe you need to put your phone on silent uh, maybe you need to uh, you know some things are distracting put them away out of that scene uh, out of that place so that you will not be distracted okay this helps in marriage this helps in parenting right and and helps in definitely in professional and ministry settings okay so just relax put things that are worrying saying okay this one hour when i'm going to be with this person i'm not going to think about that i'm going to relax i'm going to concentrate and i'm going to hear what this person has to say right listen to what this person has to say put the speaker at ease okay um, enable the person to feel free to speak okay um and that will help if we are inviting encouraging if they if we you know our gestures are there if we smile uh, you know not a lot it will make it look very creepy but or at the right places and just to be friendly to say that hey i'm here i'm willing to listen go ahead right okay um focus on being said Okay, remove distractions. Distractions can be our phones. Distraction can be maybe if our, if our computer is open in front of us. Uh, it could be that. We could be tempted to, you know, look at the mail which is coming in. Uh, maybe we're tempted to peek into our phone. What what text did something came in, you know, some notification. We're tempted to look into it. But what if our phone is face down, our laptop is closed? You know, we are, you know, um, so we're removed. All kinds of distractions. Okay, empathize. Empathize with the other person's point of view. Um, we may not fully agree with what the person is saying. Uh, we may not agree at all, but empathize, meaning just to say that I hear you. You know, I okay. So this is what you felt. Yes, okay. So, um, so we have an open mind and empathize. Okay. Um, so we don't have to nod in agreement to something. We don't have to be, uh, let's say, um, uh, we don't have to be not truthful, right? We don't have to pretend. We don't have to be hypocritical in order to empathize. OK? So we can just say, OK, in, in your mind, you tell yourself, OK, I don't agree with that, but then I'm going to listen anyway. Go ahead, right? OK. So, the, so we see that this is something that does not come naturally to us. It's counterintuitive to us, right? Because we want to go on the offensive. Somebody says, okay, how can you say Jesus is Lord? Or something, you know, right? Um, we want to go on the offensive. We want to go and say that, you know, these are the reasons, and we're actually thinking of all these reasons, etc. right? Sixth one, be patient. Maybe the person is taking time. Maybe you're used to speaking fast. You're used to listening fast, right? Even on the YouTube, you listen to the videos, you know, one and a half times faster, twice the speed. You watch the videos at that speed, and uh, you know that's how you are. But it's it's not going to help, if, you know, if you hurry, rush the person, um, and uh, and interrupt, right? Uh, so we need to be patient and to hear the person out. Well, Sometimes when the person repeats, when they repeat themselves, and you've heard it before, well, it helps to interrupt. It helps to interrupt and say, okay, yeah, I get it. I understand. This is what you said. What is the next thing? Right? Uh, if they're going in loops over the same thing over and over again, we can move on to the next thing. That is something. But when the person is presenting facts and sharing some important information, and maybe it's taking time, maybe it's their speaking style, maybe they're emotionally too, uh, what, what's the word, emotionally disturbed maybe, and they're taking time to settle down, uh, and the nature of what they're sharing is like that. Maybe it's sensitive, they're emotionally moved, and, and so on. Don't hurry, right? Uh, pause, uh, take time. Well, the other important one is listen to the tone, the volume. 
uh, and the combination of that when they say something, when they speak something, right? Um, so they will use variations of it, the pitch, the volume, the tone. Um, it can be expressive, right? Some of, some of the things that, so you can actually, um, you can see, gauge um, the excitement, you can gauge the mood, of what what was what they're saying, you can sense the sadness, right, uh, in the tone, in the expression. So, listen to that, because is the person is saying, you know, I maybe the person is saying, oh, I'm I'm so happy, but the tone does not denote that. So you know that the, although the person is saying that they're happy, there's there's an underlying sadness. There's something that's causing sadness to them, right? So uh, when we listen to the tone, when we listen to the volume, uh, normally excitement with the excitement, the voice, the volume also goes up, and uh, with something that's challenging, that's uh, something they are afraid of, something that um, you know they don't, uh, um, something that they're discouraged. Right, with that the volume goes down. Okay, and uh, one more principle for good listening: wait and watch for non-verbal communication. Okay, gestures, facial expressions, eye movements, all this. Wait and um, and receive that. What are the gestures? What are the facial expressions? Listen. So. So we see that it could be a you know far departure from maybe the, the style that we we engage in in conversations. Maybe we're not used to looking at people in the eye. Maybe we're not used to listening intently. Maybe we are you know so used to jumping on to the other topic. Maybe we are so used to um, thinking of a response. Right? That's that's something that we do. Right? Uh, maybe somebody's coming with a problem, and they're coming to you as someone who maybe can help. Maybe who can maybe as an expert, maybe who's someone who has the learning and the know-how. And so we are under pressure. And because of that, we actually end up not listening effectively. No, because we're thinking of solutions, we're thinking of answers. How can I respond to that? You know, I don't want to look bad. I don't want to be seen as someone who does not have answers. I don't want to be seen as someone who does not have solutions. You know, this can happen in an office setting. This can happen in team meetings. Right? This can happen in you know these kind of settings as well, where uh, you're you know, and, and maybe even in interviews, right, where we are not listening to the per other person, and we are formulating answers coming up with defenses and arguments and reasonings, and we actually miss out on what is being asked or what is being said. Okay, So all these are very important. These are This is an important skill to practice. So the next time when we engage in a conversation, uh, we can practice this. Right? Uh, if it was an in-person class, we would have done this. We could have actually sat face to face and and tried to listen to, you know, um, another person and 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 done that, right? Okay. Okay. Here's a, the Huria model of listening. Okay. This is an acronym, the Huria. First one, hearing. Okay. So it's um, the physical act of hearing, but also picking picking up nonverbal cues. Okay. Second one, understanding. So am I understanding what is being said? Okay. Which means you clarify, uh, receive. Um, maybe the, what is preventing me from understanding? Is it um, maybe the, the softness with which whatever is being said? Is it the language, or are these the? Is it the vocabulary, the words that are used, right? The ideas that are communicated. I'm not able to understand it, right? So, am I? What, what are some barriers, right? So try to set that right. So understand, remember. Okay, so remember the facts that are being shared. It remains. It it needs us to concentrate. It needs us to make a mental note, right? Or maybe even write down, if it's a formal setting, and you're saying, okay, I'm I'm going to write down, so that I don't miss out. Interpret, meaning, um, you build on, you enhance interpretation. You consider things like, okay, what is the context? What is the mood of the person? What are some things? Am I detecting a bias in this? Is there some preconceived notion? Right, all this. So you interpret the message, right? 
um, just like understanding it, we are interpreting it, which means it goes a step further where there is an aspect of uh, analysis, right? That happens. Okay, evaluation. Evaluation. Don't jump to conclusions. Receive it. Evaluate, which means weigh, and then respond. Okay, weigh what is being said and respond. The last one is respond, responding. Okay, so um, demonstrate, show the person that you have understood whatever they are saying, that you have understood, that you have heard, uh, not necessarily agree. Right? If it's an agreement, we can respond in agreement. Uh, but if it's not also, we can actually just communicate that you have received it. But you can tell the person that, yes, though they are not in agreement, you are listening. You know, you're empathizing with what is happening. Okay. So we, we realize that you know, it's, it's not in this order, but it can happen very simultaneously. It can happen very organically, the whole process of listening. What are some barriers? Okay, having said that, what are some barriers to uh, effective listening? Okay, so it's the opposite of the principles. Um, those are the barriers. So some barriers could be that um, distraction. We get distracted based on what the person said, and we're just anchoring on that, focusing on that, and we're losing out. How can this person say that? Why does this person say that? We're just focusing on that and then missing out on whatever else they say. We don't li listen to the rest of the message that the person has. Okay, And it could be that also um, the rate at which one speaks. Right? Maybe you're used to listening at a particular rate. And then this person either speaks too fast or too slow. So when we speak too fast, when we speak too slow, that could be a barrier to listening. Okay, that's something to be overcome. Okay, um, and maybe it's uh, you know it's a it could be a personal habit of drifting off. We say you know that person said something; it was so boring, I drifted off because we don't even exercise self control. Right? Uh, we don't exercise self control. It's hard on our flesh, and so we begin thinking about something else. Okay, what can I do? After I finish this conversation, or you know, I wonder what's for lunch, you know, all those things, right? Because we're not really focusing, uh, so we get distracted. Okay, um, so these could be some these could be some uh, some barriers to uh, our uh, to effective listening. Okay, okay. Uh, some other barriers uh, we could focus on the way they are speaking the the mistakes they make when they are speaking, maybe some grammatical errors, maybe their accent. Uh, this actually influence, you know, if it's a positive thing, but but also on a negative note, this could distract. This could be a this could be a barrier to uh, listening effectively. Okay, um, so yeah, so these are these are some things that we can uh, consider when it comes to listening. Okay. So we looked at principles, we looked at barriers. Um, just want to reiterate that this is a very important um, skill uh, before we move on to the next one. This is a, listening is a very, very important skill. Um, and um, if we are not good listeners, then we are not good communicators. Right? We answer things even before we hear it fully. We come to conclusions before we hear the matter fully. Our analysis is impaired. Our analytical capability gets impaired because we are not receiving the information fully. And so, you know, as leaders, as people of influence, as people, as maybe in ministry and um, maybe as supervisors, as overseers, uh, we need to uh, we need to exercise um, this uh, this aspect or this ability. Um, uh, we need to sharpen this ability, I would say, right? And uh, this is what we see in James chapter 1, right? And a very familiar verse. Um, James 1, 19. So, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Swift to hear. Okay. And um, there's a famous quote. I think it is... Uh, let me just... 
see that. Let's share that. It's right at the beginning. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. Um, Uh, this is Dr. Rachel Naomi, an expert on communication, sharing that the most basic and powerful way to connect to another person is to listen. Just listen. Perhaps the most important thing we can give each other is our attention. Okay, so you know, we want to build a bridge. Um, as ministers, we want to share the gospel. As um, teachers, we want to impart. As Maybe pastors, we want to nurture, you know, basically in ministry or even professionally work, we want to build that bridge so that we can effectively carry out, effectively lead, right? So this aspect of listening would is, is very, very important. It's very necessary. Um, this is what Mark Twain, you know, and this is what we are getting to, you know, in line with what we read in James chapter 1 and verse 19. Mark Twain says this, if we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues in one year. Okay. So referring to the way in which we are created, we have the way which we are designed is to listen, um, which means there's an importance of listening. Okay, so um, just want to encourage us to go through this and put to practice. You know, this week, just put to practice. Just try it out. Um, try to be an active listener. Try to maybe clarify certain things, what we don't understand. Not just nod, pretending to understand everything, right? Uh, and uh, put all our insecurities away. Right? What hey, if I ask them this? You know, something very basic I know, but I'm supposed to know this, but I don't know. I just pretend that I know it, right? So we can actually put away all those insecurities and uh, be active in our listening. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any questions or anything that you want to share uh, in your experience? So, how would you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten? when it comes to listening. Maybe you can just put it on the chat. We heard these principles. Um, maybe you you actively, intentionally use these principles. Um, so how would you rate yourself on a scale of, let's say, 1 to 10? 10. 10 being super, very good listener. 1 being, OK, you know that. 7.5, 7. And a half, seven. OK, great. Anyone else? How would you rate yourself as a listener? Others? Not in the reckoning at all? OK, right. Eight, OK, good. OK, right. So um, you know, so when we include this, and enhance our communication ability. Right? When we uh, are speaking, are communicating, when we add this facet, it becomes a very powerful, uh, it becomes very impactful in our, uh, our we become powerful communicators. Right? Um, and we can study some of these you know, communicators and how effectively. Um, OK, so Rosalind says, sometimes I lack to give solution. OK, um, that's OK, because you can give what you have, right? And uh, and that is what is expected. So we can always say, I can find out. I can search. I can research. I can find out. I can come back. We can always do that. So the person will go back saying, OK, at least this person is taking an effort. This person has I heard me out, and so on. Right. OK. Right. So um, uh, OK, next is uh, time management, management of time. So let me just uh, share some opening uh, remarks. And then next class, we will, uh, we will look at it. So in, in, you know, when it comes to the leadership class that we studied, we, we studied about um, um, this aspect of time. You know? So we have resources. 
time is also a very important resource. Okay, just like money or finances, uh, and just like ability or skill, uh, talent. Right, that's a very important resource. That's why um, we have the term human resource because human beings, with their learning, experience, skill, ability, bring something to the organization, to the team. Right, so. They are a human resource. So we have financial resources, human resource. And also, uh, when it comes to time, time is a very precious resource, right? Um, because something something to do with time is um, it's something that when it's, it's, it's moving, it's kind of linear for a human being. It's, it's moving days, months, years, keeps moving forward. There's no backward. There's no reversing time. There's no going back in time, right? Especially, uh, you know, except in maybe science fiction books or science fiction movies, where you go back or you go ahead, right? So we uh, there's no going back in time. Right? So time is a very important resource. So um, how do we utilize it well? How do we uh, manage it? Um, it's, it's important for us to learn that and and more importantly utilize that you know and um, I just want to say that yes it is it is something for us to put into practice every day okay? we can we can have those peaks of good time management but if we let loose let things go we can go to the depths of mismanagement of time right and it's difficult to come back it's def difficult to get that gain that momentum and keep going. Um, so it's something which calls for consistency, being consistent, just like how we saw in the life of Daniel. Right? Okay, okay. So we'll stop here, and um, we'll continue next class where we look at time management. Right? Thank you so much. Any any questions you can ask, um, you can put on the chat. Otherwise, we will uh, we can close. Right? Okay. Fine. No questions. So we'll uh, we'll stop here. Thank you so much. We'll meet again next week. God bless. Bye bye.